This is so common now, the C-shaped human thing. So people are on their phone, they're in bed, they're, they're not getting enough light or they just artificial light, or they're trying to get the sunlight through the window. Terrible. In this enlightening discussion, we discover the undeniable value of stepping away from our screens and immersing ourselves in the natural world. More than just gazing outside from our windows, Huberman emphasizes the importance of experiencing the outdoors and the sunlight firsthand. Artificial light pales in comparison, often leaving us feeling drained and disconnected. Let Huberman guide you on a journey to reclaim your vitality and embrace the power of nature's energy. The single best thing you can do for your sleep, your energy, your mood, your wakefulness, your metabolism is to get natural light in your eyes early in the day. Don't wear sunglasses to do it. it takes about 10 minutes or so. But for me, it's it, I'm absolutely all over if I do that. I wake up and I, I don't know what day it is and my emotions always feel a little bit out of whack as well. That's the hardest part of the day, actually. If I was well-structured in the early part of the day, it's that two or 3 p.m. The key is then to try and get something really useful done cognitively again. So some people might look at this and say, wait, you're working for an hour in the morning and 30 minutes here and an hour in the afternoon. When are you actually working? But it's really about the depth of the trench when you're working. When I wake up, I make a beeline for sunlight. Uh, so I'm going to get sunlight in my eyes. This sets in motion a huge number of different neurobiological and, and hormonal cascades that are good for you, reduces stress late at night, offsets cortisol, a million different things really that are good for you. So I get that. Say, try and get as much natural light as you can in the morning hours, whenever it is that that is for you, especially the first three hours after waking. If you can work outside, great. If you can get near a window, because as opposed to just in a dark conference room, that's better. But if you can get outside, that would be fantastic. This inspiring segment invites you to break free from the confines of your home and embrace the rejuvenating effects of sunlight. As you step outside and bask in the morning light, you're quickly going to realize the impact that it's having on your well-being. And this isn't just any ordinary advice. It comes from Dr. Huberman himself, an expert in the field. Experience firsthand the profound benefits of connecting with the natural world and welcoming each day with renewed energy, purpose. But let's say it's a very clear day and I can see where the sun is. I do not need to stare directly into the sun. You just look toward it, but not directly at it. It's absolutely fine to blink. In fact, I encourage you to blink whenever you feel the impulse to blink. Never look at any light, sunlight or otherwise, that's so bright that it's painful to look at because you can damage your eyes. But for this morning sunlight viewing, it's best to not wear sunglasses. That's right, to not wear sunglasses at least for this morning sunlight viewing. Light viewing early in the day is the most powerful stimulus for wakefulness throughout the day, and it has a powerful positive impact on your ability to fall and stay asleep at night. So this is really the foundational power tool for ensuring a great night's sleep and for feeling more awake during the day. The bright artificial lights in your home environment are not, I repeat, are not going to be sufficiently bright to turn on the cortisol mechanism and the other wake-up mechanisms that you need early in the day. The diabolical twist, however, is that those lights in your home or apartment or even on your phone are bright enough to disrupt your sleep if you look at them too late at night or in the middle of the night. So there's this asymmetry in our retinal, our eye biology and in our brain's biology, whereby early in the day, right around waking, you need a lot of light, a lot of photons, a lot of light energy. And artificial lights generally just won't accomplish what you need them to accomplish. But at night, even a little bit of artificial light can really mess up your so-called circadian, your 24-hour clocks and all these mechanisms that we're talking about. Now, how much light and how much light viewing do you need? This is going to vary depending on person and place, literally where you live on earth, whether or not there's a lot of tree cover, whether or not you're somebody who has sensitive eyes or less sensitive eyes. It's really impossible for me to give an absolute prescriptive, but we can give some general guidelines. In general, on a clear day, meaning no cloud cover or minimal cloud cover, you want to get this sunlight exposure to your eyes for about five minutes or so. Could be three minutes one day, could be seven minutes the next day, about five minutes. On a day where there's cloud cover, so the sun is just peeking through the clouds or it's more dense cloud cover, you want to get about 10 minutes of 
sunlight exposure to your eyes early in the day. And on days that are really densely overcast or maybe even a rainy, you're going to want to get as much as 20 or 30 minutes of sunlight exposure. Another key thing is do not forget about, just don't try and get this sunlight exposure through a windshield of a car or a window, whether or not it's tinted or otherwise. It takes far too long. It's simply not going to trigger the relevant mechanisms. So just don't try and do it through a windshield, sunglasses, or a window. It's just not going to work. Get outside. If the weather is really bad or for whatever reason, safety reasons, you cannot get outside, well, then I suppose try and get near a window. That would be the last, last resort. But you really want to get outside to get the sunlight exposure. So, okay, we've got um, 90 minutes deep. What have you been doing yeah. in that? You've had your light in the eyes. What have you been doing between that and the yerba mate in 90 minutes? I do everything I can to not do email, not do social media, and to take care of a few critical tasks. These days, I am I have this obsession with trying to do one cognitively hard thing a day, one, and one physically hard thing a day. Now, it does not extreme physical, not David Goggins level workouts or anything, but um, even though I prefer to work out earlier, I generally will then do some sort of physical workout. Most of the time, not always, I keep my phone out or off of for most workouts. I try and get my brain into kind of a linear mode. I try and narrow that aperture. Because if I don't, the distraction that's created by social media and interactions with others can kind of wick out into the rest of the day. So I'm not necessarily trying to finish something in that time, but I try and do something challenging. I'm a big believer based on quality peer reviewed data that hydration is essential for mental performance. Either way, I force myself essentially to drink at least 16 and most days 32 ounces of water. I also put a little bit of sea salt in the water. As many of you know, neurons require ionic flow. What that means is neurons need sodium, they need magnesium, and they need potassium in order to function. We do tend to get dehydrated at night. Even if the day is not very hot, I try and top off or I try and Make sure that I'm hydrated early in the day before I begin any work. At that point, I start thinking about and fantasizing about and craving caffeine, but I don't drink that caffeine yet. I purposely delay my caffeine intake to 90 minutes to 120 minutes after I wake up. The reason for delaying caffeine intake 90 minutes to two hours after waking is I want to make sure that I don't have a late afternoon or even early afternoon crash from caffeine. One of the best ways to ensure a caffeine crash is to drink a bunch of caffeine, block all those adenosine receptors, and then by early or late afternoon, when that caffeine starts to wear off and gets dislodged from the receptors, a lower level of adenosine is able to create a greater level of sleepiness. It took me years to figure this out. I used to wake up and I'd think, oh, I don't want to drink caffeine too close to bedtime, so I'm going to start drinking my caffeine really early. I let my cortisol naturally come up in the morning. I avoid drinking caffeine until about 90 minutes or two hours after waking. And when I do that, I find that I don't experience the afternoon crash. So for me, I just keep it fairly simple. I ingest water, caffeine from yerba mate and guayusa, and I drink my athletic greens with some lemon juice in it. That constitutes my fasting. And there are days when I do all those things. There are days when I do none of those things. Although most days, I would say about 355 days out of the year, I'm ingesting water, caffeine, and athletic greens during this period of fasting early in the day. And that's the period of time when I do my work. Depending on how reclined you are or upright you are, you will decrease with reclining and increase with sitting forward your levels of alertness. So try and arrange a workstation or a position of your body in your chair or your standing desk, whatever it is, that allows you to work with a heightened state of alertness. This is really, really key for me because I found that when I would sit down, not only would my hip flexors start to get sore, I'd feel tight in the back, etc., but if I was staring down at my screen all day, or even for short periods of the day, I would start to feel sleepy and I couldn't figure out what was going on. I also thought maybe I needed glasses. I do wear readers at night, but it was really a problem. And simply by getting the screen directly in front of me at eye level, it's been completely transformative. The only point I wanna make about sleep is that if you happen to stay up late, 
it's still best to get up at your regular wake up time. It's a very simple solution to a problem that a lot of people have, which is they stay up till two or three in the morning and then they tend to sleep late and then it tends to disrupt their rhythm. Try on most days and most nights to wake up at more or less the same time and try to go to sleep at more or less the same time. 